Exactly. Let's do it. Welcome, everybody, to the Act Black Box podcast. We have a bit of a different format here today, and I'm really excited to have you here. With us today, we have the cast of Rent. Now, if you don't know, Rent is a show about love and loss uh, that takes place back in the 90s. But first, I'm going to have all of our cast here introduce themselves and what part they're playing. So, uh, Robbie, go ahead and take us away. So, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm Robbie Soto, and I play Tom Collins, and I'm also uh, doubling over as director, too. Director as well. So you're yeah. double dipping there. I am a little bit. All right. Well, Don't mind me. I'm just sharing the podcast. That's all right. We'll touch back <laughs> on that. It's a big time. Um, hi, I'm Billy Blair, and I will be playing Angel, and that'll be the only thing I'll be doing in these next two weeks. Yes. <laughs> Outstanding. Yes. Outstanding. Like I said, my name is Dustin Perot, and I will be playing Roger. My turn. My name is Kristen Davis, and I'm playing Maureen. Last but not least. And I'm Jeremy Schmel, and I'll be playing Mark. All right. So... Tell me a little bit about Rent. I think most of our viewers out there probably have an idea of what Rent is, but let's assume they don't. They have no idea. They've never been exposed to the show. Sum up the show in a few sentences, guys. What do you think? <laughs> well, I think... Director can take Player Yeah, player. <laughs> I um, So I think, I think the biggest thing that... The, there's a lot of themes that, that surround Rent, and it's it's... Much, um, much deeper than a lot of people take it as. But um, like you said, it's a story about, you know, loving, loving the people that you're around, loving, um, you know, living every day like it's your it's your last day. Like you don't have tomorrow. Tomorrow is not promised. There's, um, you know, and, and again, there's there's so many, so many different um, storylines that are going on and just it, it's raw. It's real. It's not, uh, we're playing people, we're not playing characters. I think there's a big difference between the two. And, and with Rent, it's, it's real people that you, that, you know, you, you can look at one of these characters and say, oh, Dustin is Roger. That, I mean, you know, I mean, you can, you can look at it and say, yeah, Jeremy kind of is like Mark, you know, and you can really put pieces together and, and take bits and pieces out of every character and, um, and apply them to people you know. And it's, again, when, when we're going through rehearsals and we're talking about all the different things and all the different, um, all the different scenarios, I think the biggest thing that I always talk about is just the raw emotion behind the show. I mean, you can't, you can't fake what, what this show is. I think that's what makes it so special and so, so different. So what is it that makes Rent special? I mean, it is a show that takes place back during the 90s. Uh, and many of the characters have been diagnosed with AIDS in the show. And it deals with their struggle uh, getting through that, their struggle as artists, because most of them are artists trying to make their way in the world, uh, whether it is uh, through a, a digital revolution that's happening on the art industry's landscape or a more uh, bohemian version. What is it about the show that, that gives it legs, that makes it special? I think um, even with it taking place in the 90s and maybe the heart of the, the HIV AIDS epidemic maybe not being universally relatable to everybody, the overarching theme and message of love and community and loss and not taking that time for granted is universally relatable as much as we don't probably don't want to talk about it anymore. The last 18 months, almost two years have been really tough for people. Mm -hmm. um, uh, there's an ongoing drug addiction crisis in our country. And I think in our community, in yes. our community. Right even, yeah. So I, I think between all of those things, there's, there's something where you, you may know somebody struggling with, with drug addiction, or maybe somebody who is sick, possibly with, with COVID, um, just anything, anything like that, where you don't want to take that time that you have for, for granted. I know for me, the first time around, and I know for you too, as a, a, we rehearsed the show the first time around for a year and between the two of us, so we, we lost three family members suddenly on some very unexpectedly and some immediately one immediately after too. So never more than during that time, uh, did I 
really kind of realize, hey, you don't have anything guaranteed to you. So be kind to people. You never know what they're going through. Measure your life in love, as corny or as cliche as that might sound. Um, just love people. Love the journey. Love the destination. Love the struggle. Just love. Love is crucial. Loves everything. And family, too. I think this this show is about um, found family. Mm -hmm. These people are able to find each other. And I think what also is so special about this show is these characters, like kind of Robbie was touching on, these are these are archetypes. These are type of people that I, I know growing up, I, I watched the movie, I saw, I listened to the music, and I was like, oh, oh, I, oh, I, oh, I get it. And I'm, I know a lot of other people felt that as well. So I think the idea of seeing yourself in a certain form on stage and then being able to be a part of that and feel that familial um, way with people, I think that's some of the magic of it. And it's interesting you say that in the show itself, uh, some of the characters have actually expressed that their actual blood family, they don't necessarily get along right. with, but they are pretty tight. But there are some other dynamics in there as well, uh, because there are parts of a love story. Can you tell me about that? Yeah. So um, I think anybody that's coming to see the show probably knows the line, so I'm not spoiling too much. I mean, if you don't, still come see it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I'm not going to give away too much, but as, let's say my character, Roger, is um, kind of recovering from a great loss in his life, and uh, his love interest in the story, Mimi, kind of literally barges her way into her into his life through through the door of his apartment and roger's not ready to receive what she's willing to give for a multitude of reasons uh, he's still coping with a loss he's he's coping with the finality of what his life is going to look like um but again this is chronicling a year in these people's lives and people change um ideals change um, priorities change and he realizes that you're not guaranteed anything and love kind of overrules and love conquers all. And uh, that's, sorry, I'm kind of stumbling a little bit. <laughs> that's um, right. That's right. No, but I think, I think it's interesting too, though, with, especially with Roger's story and how um, he's so, he's so, pushing everything away mm -hmm. until he finally opens himself up. And it's, it's immediately as he opens himself up within, within a week, you know, he realizes why he was closing himself mm -hmm. off and like the walls get knocked down yeah. and then he builds them right back up. And it kind of shows you that, you know, in, in the story with Roger's story in particular, that, and the way we've done it and the way I've directed it is that Roger never says, that he loves Mimi. Mimi never says he loves Roger until it's too late. Mm -hmm. And I think it's, it's a, it's a big part of, you know, we can, you know, we all have problems and we all have our own issues and we all, I think all of us have tendencies to push people away. Um, and when we don't tell those people that we truly love and that we truly care about, whether as friends or as, as significant others or, or partners or, um, or anything else, when we don't tell people that it may be the last thing that they, didn't hear from you. They, they may, they may be yearning for that. They may want that. They might want to tell you the same thing, but you waited too long and, and that, that becomes a problem. And I think it happens so often. I mean, how many times do you, do you hear people when somebody, when somebody tragically passes away and not even tragically, when somebody passes away, it's like, damn, the last thing I said to them, you know, or I didn't, I didn't spend enough time with them or I didn't, I didn't give everything I could to them because I was so worried about, X, Y, Z, you know, I'm worried about my baggage. I'm worried about their baggage. I'm worried about, you know, uh, um, anything else that their past, whatever. So I'm not letting my, I'm not opening myself up to this. And then it becomes too late and the story stops and you don't have that opportunity. And I think the story kind of shows you, you know, again, live your life in love, you know, love people, tell them you love them, tell them every day, because when you don't, you might not have that opportunity ever, ever again. Which kind of resonates the the guy who wrote the show, Jonathan Larson, mm -hmm. and he died <clears throat> what, opening night, right? Or, uh, the, he died the night before mm -hmm. opening night. So, I mean, that really strikes a chord with that whole thing leading up to it. You got to put it out on the table. And mm -hmm. like you said, now that we've had the pandemic here for a while, uh, everybody it's knows somebody. If, if, if you haven't been personally affected by it, you know somebody who has. And uh, do you think that has influenced the show at all? I, 
I think there's, I think each of us draws from different experiences. I, I think all of us have, you know, something else. Like I know Kristen, you know, what we, we her and I have talked about where she's drawing her motivation from for this show specifically. Um, you know, I think we all grab from different pieces. I mean, I know I use um, the death of my mother uh, personally uh, a lot um, for, for my motivation and, and Angel's death, um, you know, and I, I think I think it's all a little bit different for me. You know, I, I don't I personally don't don't really worry about COVID and, and you know, uh, that, that doesn't play um, have anything to do with my character. Um, but I don't know about I don't know. Jeremy, I, mean, I, think maybe, just... or, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, yes, in a way, because Mark is very social and I am very social. And, you know, during the shutdown, I was not allowed to be social. I was you know, stuck somewhere. And that's where I'm relating to this. And I want to be friends with everybody. I want everybody to like me, same as Mark. Mm -hmm. He wants to be friends with all of them. He wants to, you know, keep them close. I mean, she breaks my heart, (laughs) leaves me. Um, But I still care about her and I still want her to be happy. I support her character, you know, in the show because that's, who I am. <laughs> and yeah, she's such I a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And same with Roger. Like, you know, like, he's my roommate, but he's my best friend. And I'm trying to get him to break out of his shell. And all of a sudden, it takes a stranger, not me, mm-hmm. that yeah. does it. So I have a little bit of jealousy, I think, towards Mimi in a way. Yeah. But I'm also grateful for her because she came into his life and really helped him come out, so to speak. <laughs> I gotcha. That, that's good. So when people think about Rent, obviously people think about the music because the music is amazing, right? I mean, it's, it, it's high pace, it's rock, it's tugs at your heartstrings. I mean, who hasn't walked around singing 520? Hey, Hopi's here. <laughs> come, come on, on Hopi. <laughs> I saved you a seat. Sorry, I'm late. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, Hope. Hope. Hope, tell us about you who you that? are and uh, what you're playing maybe. in the show. Hold on, we got we got to reshuffle here okay, a little bit. Get Hope. Okay, me. Okay. There we go. Yeah, she does. Hi guys, I'm Hope. Um, I am full time a nurse, part time. Like to to do this, hang out with these guys. It's my my favorite. Um, but yeah, really, you know, I mean, that's really all I do at this point: <laughs> nursing and theater that's not anymore, bad. especially. That's hard. So we're no, we're talking about rent, and I was gonna bring up the show is twenty five years old now. Like it, it is not a new show <laughs> at all. A quarter of a century has gone by. It's since older than the Billy. Show debuted. Yeah. Me <laughs> <laughs> yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah, let's keep selling. <laughs> so when the show came out, it was really edgy. You know, the the mm-hmm. band was up on stage. The, the content was very modern, very in your face. You know, this is in the news right now or has been recently. Does it still hold that same edginess and gravity that it did 25 years ago? Yeah. I think so. Uh, yeah. I think so. I, I think the weight of the story, I think still seeing a family deal with loss, deal with love, deal with this whole year of things and the end on the heels of what we have all experienced these last however long it's really been. Um, I think it still packs a punch. I do. I And maybe I'm just projecting because every time I listen to certain songs, I still feel things. And I'm like, ah, oh, okay. This is this, you know, there, it's a flawed show in certain ways, but there, it, it's really wonderful in so many more ways. I, that's the long version of, yes, I still think it packs a punch. I think, <laughs> I also think, you know, after after 25, going on 26 years since it was it was released, I mean, yeah, AIDS is not necessarily a death sentence anymore. Mm-hmm. But again, when you, when, when you, absolutely. Mm-hmm, yes. But when you, when you get away from, you know, just looking at the show as, okay, AIDS are destroying these people's lives and this family's lives from, from the inside out. Um, you know, when you get away from just looking at it from that perspective, because that's a lot of the critiques the show gets now is that's no longer relevant because AIDS is no longer a death sentence. So it's less relevant. I completely disagree because I look at the show again, addiction. You know, you have uh, um, depression, Mm -hmm. you know, mental health issues. You have, um, you know, people who are are dealing with all those things. And that if you don't latch on to the AIDS portion of the show, 
and you just look at it for what it is, it, it's so relevant. I mean, it, it has touched generation after generation. And if you realize that all of those things are still uh, other things that an audience can relate to, but yet, uh, you know, these characters and the people in this timeline were dealing with all these things that we're dealing with, but also age with a death sentence. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, when it's kind of framed in that, um, whatever, it still packs that punch. It packs mm -hmm. that punch. Mm -hmm. Well, even too, just given the time that we're in now, it might not be, you know, it was an AIDS pandemic, but now that we are still currently living in a different pandemic, that alone, I think still mm -hmm. is pertinent for people. It's like, even though it, they may not identify with the AIDS portion, Everybody knows someone who has something that they're dying from. Mm -hmm. Everyone knows someone who is an addict. Everyone knows someone that has these mental health issues. So it's relatable, you know, regardless. I think those are kind of timeless. And I think that's why that show is so special, because there are those timeless messages that will forever pack a punch. And I think you could say that about a lot of musicals, like some sometimes the literal subject matter uh, or like the means of getting to what the overarching theme and message is might be. It might be nonsensical. It might not make sense. It might be pure, pure fiction of the highest form, but it's our responsibility as the actors to use that vessel to kind of communicate that overarching theme and that overarching message. And I feel pretty confidently about the group of us that we have that everybody's not only committed and dedicated, but cares on a truly genuine, deep level for their own individual reasons and collectively as a community uh, to portray that and do it justice. Mm. Yeah, a lot of people don't realize uh, the show is actually based on an opera, La Boheme, mm -hmm. which is, it came out a hundred years before Rented. Um, and obviously it had legs enough that it, it could carry on a hundred years later. Uh, there, was a, there was a production of La Boheme 45 minutes from here a year ago. Hmm. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. It's 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 Lava Lump still going on. Yeah. It's a beautiful it's opera. Beautiful score. Oh, oh my god. Oh boy. Anyway, sorry. No. <laughs> <laughs> like, Ooh, okay. Opera. I fucking love Lava hey, Lump. It's opera. great. It's awesome. Um, so, Robbie, you kind of touched on this right after we started with Hagerstown mm -hmm. and you know the Hagerstown area, and it kind of being relevant specifically to this area. And I know that you were kind of passionate about getting rent here when we started looking at it as, as president of authentic community theater, why is it relevant here? Well, I mean, that whole process sucked. I'm not going to lie. Um, for, for those of you who don't know, like I had to, we actually got denied the rights when I first applied for it in 2017 because it was on tour. Um, I had to send a letter to Jonathan Larson's estate. Um, and uh, to Julie Larson, who uh, his sister, who we are, I'm still in contact with. We still email back and forth, um, you know, and uh, um, she granted us the rights. She overrode the, the Tory company um, as the uh, executor of, of Jonathan Larson's estate and said, no, you guys can do it. Because um, in the letter I sent her, I said, our community is riddled with addiction. It is it is the biggest problem in our community. And this show is going to help touch that. Um, and she sent, uh, um, she sent an, uh, a letter back and said that, uh, um, you know, Jonathan would have been the first to say yes, if this show is going to help your community and bring light to a situation in your community that to do it. And, uh, the first time we did it, we, we worked with, uh, Emily Keller and Washington goes purple. Um, you know, and we, we raised money for them. Um, and we, we were able to write them, you know, $2,000 check you know, just for, you know, um, you know, uh, to, to help the community. But our, our community is, um, you know, still to this day, it, our biggest issue is addiction, um, in my opinion. And, um, you know, it's, it's again, everybody knows somebody who, who goes through it. Everybody knows somebody who, who deals with an addiction of some sort, whether it be drugs, sex, um, alcohol, anything else. Um, and you, when, when you know somebody who goes through it, you see them um, over time start to deteriorate, you know, very, very similar to, to AIDS. You see them start to deteriorate and, and more and more changes their personality, changes who they are. And for, for me, it was important to, to touch on that issue. It's one of Act's missions is to um, do theater that provokes thoughts and, and provokes change. And, um, you know, did anybody come to rent uh, that, was, that was a heroin addict and, and, you know, go flush your stash? Maybe. 
maybe not. Um, but for me, Dustin and Chris and being the original cast, our dress rehearsal, we actually performed for about 30 people uh, from Wells House, which is a, um, a rehab facility, um, an inpatient rehab facility here in Hagerstown um, that works with people of addiction. And uh, there's still a pit, I still have the picture um, mm -hmm. hanging up in my house of they came up on stage, they were giving us hugs, they were like, thank you so much, we needed this, you know, and, and you know, just giving them that little bit of encouragement of you, know, you can do it. You're in recovery. Keep going. Um, and any any recovering act will tell you it's it's an everyday fight every day. And and it, so it was important to us to 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 really touch those people and and to let them know, like you know, you're not in alone. You know, even even though I don't know you from Adam, you know, I I I, I want you to do better. I, I want you to I want you to get to a point where you you feel you're you're back to your old self. Um, and, and you're, you're doing, you're doing well. And again, if, if, it, if it's one person, it's worth it. I like that. If it's yeah. one person, it's worth it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Anybody else want to throw anything out there for that one? I think you covered it. Right? Yeah. That was, yeah. That was good. Yeah, well yeah, said. Yeah, All right. <laughs> All right. So, so for this next one, it's uh, it's an opinion question. All right. So I, I want to know what you know. So, Rent has been on the stage many times. I'm sure many of you have seen it. We've also had the movie with the original cast that came out a few years back. And then there was the uh, live performance on TV. Yes, there was. Right? It live, right? <laughs> okay. Yeah. So here's what I want to know. Yeah. Oh, here, there's, there's always got to be a show with tea, right? We got to have a little bit. So which one did you like the best? Which one? Did you hate? Why? Just pick it apart. All right. And if Lin Manuel was not in any of them. Thank God. It would have been bad if Lin Manuel was in it. Sucks. There's no gold LeMay. Life was good. All right. Let's let's start with you, Hope. What do you think? Definitely the live, as we I think can all kind of agree. Ooh, low on my list. Like the lowest of low on my list. It just, I don't even really know why there were so many things it just wasn't good it was not good the people that they had casted did not represent the characters i don't i really i don't even have words for it to tell you the truth. i don't know it just not for me right. not for me um yeah and then i i mean anytime you can see something live i feel like it's hard to compare that really to a movie because that's such a different experience mm, um sure. i grew up watching the movie you know i watched that that was my daily thing. Like literally every day it was on um, my friends and I would all assign each other roles and would act out the show, you know, the whole thing. So that always holds a special place in my heart. But then of course, seeing it live, there's nothing, nothing like that. So I, I can't really pick between either the live or the movie because they both are special to me for different reasons. What but. if you had to pick one redeeming aspect, one thing that they got right from the, on TV live performance. Um, um, <laughs> Brandon Victor Dixon. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yes, there fair, you go. fair. 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 Yes. Fair. Let me go. Okay. His version of the reprise. Are butter. He's a yes. national treasure. I'll cover butter. Your oh yeah. yeah. Because if, if I may, yeah. yes. the vocals on that live one mm. are just abhorrent. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it, yes. Like, oh. uh, it was a train. I'm sorry, girl, yeah. but Valentina, like, <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. Not sorry. the case, not the case, not the case vocally. Um, to quote Aretha Franklin, yeah. gowns, gowns, beautiful gowns. If you get that reference, you spend as so much time on the internet as I do. Um, <laughs> I, so I want the only time I've seen it live was actually uh, um, in college. My college did it, um, and I was not in it. But now I get to be in it. Um, and I got to watch it and it was incredible. It was incredible because it was people I knew really well mm -hmm. doing it. So like I also have a propensity to cry at everything. Oh. But like oh. um, but also grew up watching the movie, very kind of yeah. to you. Yeah. Like that movie was like, oh, wait a minute. This is this it is was a... just so different. Like mm -hmm. yeah. it was so different for everything. I mean, because we're all very the same age, yeah, pretty much. So it was like just watching that at like this pivotal. <laughs> Sorry, Jeremy. Uh, I love you. Those like pivotal points, you know, kind of in our yes. lives that really shaped like, and I think probably kind of shaped like how we ended up like growing up and how we ended up viewing people. And I'm sure 100%. we are still yeah. like, you know, theater kids at that time. So we were all kind of going through like that emotional, like mirroring. We're all a little different. And, we feel things. Right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so like seeing something, even if it's like content matter that we don't completely 
get 100 yeah. percent you know like songs like light my candle i probably wouldn't have known at you know 10 that that's <laughs> about heroin you know whatever like i yeah. wouldn't have known that however i could tell just the emotion behind it and things like that so that was <clears throat> i don't know super formative period okay yeah. who's next Kristen? me <laughs> yeah well i can agree that it's not like the live one i <laughs> I didn't, I didn't, well, for me personally watching like Vanessa Hudgens play Maureen, mm -hmm. I didn't, I didn't get it. That, Sorry. I will admit, that was a uh, yeah, absolutely. that was hard Over the moon, watch. I just didn't understand, but <laughs> it's okay. Um, I also grew up watching the movie. I have actually never seen it live on stage, honestly. Like I've seen clips on YouTube, but right. okay. I've never seen it live. So I, all I really know is the movie. Um, and it's kind of cool for me because as a kid, I... I grew up in a household that was like super relig like religious and like I was very sheltered. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I'll never be able to do this. Right. Like it's just something yeah. that I'll get to watch and enjoy and never actually get to <laughs> do. So when we got the cast list and he cast me as Maureen, I was like, wait, what? Yes, I'm going over the <laughs> I, was, wait, I was like, what is happening? Like, can, yeah. can I say something on that sure. real quick? So Kristen came in and auditioned for Mimi and, and she was phenomenal. But she was too clean cut. I couldn't see it. Yeah. And then, <laughs> yeah. so, so I was yeah. like, so I was sitting there. I was like, can I make this work? I was like, you know what? I would take anything. We were, we were auditioning the Joannes. And the, the girl, the, um, right now, who played Joanne originally with us, she sang. And I was like, I looked at Sierra Saunders, who was a stage manager. <laughs> yeah. And I handed her a script. And I said, tell Kristen to go look, to look at Maureen for Take Me or Leave Me I right now. I didn't need to look at it. Yeah, so again, I watched it in the movie right. a million times. So, but so I was afraid to put Maureen because I didn't think it was it ever was, a thing. It was argu arguably, in my opinion, my best casting decision I ever made. <laughs> uh, honestly, I, I mean that because she she slays Maureen. Uh -huh. Like it is, it is incredible. Uh -huh. Idina who is what Wilson Jermaine Haradia said. The original Angel, when he saw her perform, uh -huh. he said. Idina who it still makes me like red thing it was it was one of the I, I don't know it, I don't know what to say about we that. me and Wilson were sitting on my couch watching it and she did over the moon he was like bitch okay <laughs> <laughs> All right. and then take me or leave me he stood up in my living room clapped I didn't know that and said Idina who <laughs> who <laughs> Wilson, and I was, I was sitting there. It was, it was me, Brittany Wilson, oh, and I think Tim, I Tim was there. And we were just like, yeah, I, I agree. Like it was, like it was oh, one of the greatest casting decisions <laughs> yep. I personally ever made. Thank you. So, and it got me out of my box. So thank you. Yes. So fun fact: um, while these auditions were happening, um, everybody who wasn't in the room for audition and like literally was like in layers of four with their ear up <laughs> oh, at the door, God. trying to listen to combos <laughs> and pick out voices of people. And I knew she was going in to sing for Maureen because I was sitting there with her when they handed her the music. So she went in and I was like, oh, I want to I want to hear like who they have her sing with. <laughs> and the second that the two of them sang together, I was like, hashtag booked it. Yep. No, and I knew, too. I was like, that's it. Yeah. They, you guys literally looked at each other. And like, I got you. You were like. It was, oh, and okay. it, 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 it was, was and typically, and typically you get the, you have the whole like, thank you after something happens. There were, there was at least five to like Everybody eight seconds silent. of just yeah. silence. I, I can tell you that I saw, cause there were, we had like 60 people audition for the show it the was, first yeah, time around. It was a lot. And there were a bunch of people in there for Maureen and Joanne. I saw at least 10 heads just go down. Susie ever done like, it. Wow. Wow. That's, that's gone. <laughs> You know, like and that, yeah. 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 like every everybody Special knew. Dreams. Like I knew at that moment, I still kept him around to, to keep messing with him and try to play. You know, uh, have a poker face a little bit. But I was like, that's yeah, I, know I, li well. I literally yeah, wrote messy. down. I wrote down on. I was like, yep, Joanne Maureen's <laughs> done. Put that to the side. Let's just keep going uh, and let everybody else go. Well, then I came, absolutely incredible. Yeah, I was going to say, and then I came to see it. So the first time when I couldn't do it, I was still finishing up nursing school yeah. and all that. I literally sobbed when I couldn't come out audition the first time because I'm like, you know, the, this is a theater company that I've wanted to work with that I really respect. These are, you know, if, at this time, like some people that I'd worked with previously had started to kind of come in and I'm like, good things are happening here. Like, I want to get in on that. So I cried because I couldn't at that point. <laughs> it was hor it was horrible. <laughs> and then so I came to see it. Either way, I came to see it because I was off that night. I was like, okay, great. I'm gonna do this. You know, it was a bunch of people I love, a bunch of people I had then, since it was such a long process, had worked with a couple of new people too. And I was so pumped. 
And I saw Kristen again. She was my moment because yeah. when, well, no, seriously though, That's, because Kristen is. and I, when we, we did chorus line together yeah. and she played Maggie. So my Kristen seeing her bloom from like her sweet yeah. starting, you know, starting theater really is starting like mm-hmm. being a vocalist and really like building, seeing her go from a Maggie. <laughs> I, I literally, my jaw was on the floor. I was like, you remember that time when Alyssa was like asking you to sing out, like and telling you yeah. to project your voice. <laughs> Yeah, there it is. She like, was, that's it. It was it was amazing. Oh I've told gosh. Kristen a bunch of times, I hate Over the Moon. I think it is yeah. the dumbest, <laughs> stupidest song in the entire score. I find it annoying. I hate it. I love it. She's so that's in your face, like, her I don't rendition. Care if you like it or not, this is what you're I doing. did nothing for that for that entire so, for that entire scene. I was no, like, Chris, I was like, you do your thing. Do it, yeah. I was like, I want to see what you do. If you need me, <laughs> I got you. Yeah. I can give you everything yeah. you do. But I want to see what ahead. you come yeah, up with. And she, and I sat back. I was just like, every time we get to it, I'm just like, God, I just want to skip it. I just want to skip it. I just want to skip it. And then she, she was finally ready to do it. And then she, I was like, that was fun. I hated this. I've hated this number for yeah. for 15 years. I thought it was the dumbest thing ever. Yep. And well, and she, knowing she, she that too made it. me try to think at it, like about it from an angle of how do I make this, like, yes, she's so in your face and and she is who she is and that's great. But how do you make that likable and not go too far to where? People don't like you, or they can't relate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, how, how do I find the fine, the fine line? Of, yeah. Yeah. Well, clearly, it sounds like you did, girl. Yeah. Well, I tried. <laughs> yeah. So, if nothing else, come see Kristen yeah, and Brett. Oh, Seth. Come see Kristen. We got so off topic. Um, I'm sorry. I'm I, had, I, had, I, had, I had to put it out there. I appreciate it. I needed that, honestly. Thank anyway, you. Anyway, Dustin, you're up now. Yeah. Follow that. Yeah. So, clear, clear, clear loser. Yeah. 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 Clear, clear loser, rent live. Uh-huh. Um, yes. Oh, that's what we were talking about. Yeah, we're done talking about me. Talking about Chris. There's always a chance we can get back to that. In my opinion, I didn't start it. I do. Yeah. Thank you. Anyway. Yeah, rent live didn't do it for me in any facet, with the exception of Brandon Victor Dixon. Specifically, the reprise. But every everything else. The, I just I didn't feel I didn't feel a connection. I don't know if it was because it was supposed to be in this in this live setting, but I don't even think that that's a good excuse because I feel it at a lot of live performances that I go to. Uh, it just I never felt that I never felt that real connection watching that performance of it. And I had only seen the movie one time before we actually did the show. I kind of uh, we can, watched it together. Yeah, in that college. was literally wow. the only time that yeah. I had ever watched when it. Came to and I honestly <laughs> didn't, I didn't love it the first time that I watched it. And I almost, I kind of consider myself a lapsed musical theater kid who found his way back. Yeah. Um, I, I stopped doing it to write and play my own music, and I did that for eight or nine years. And Robbie reached out to me. Uh, to come to the ACT building to uh, do a little like, karaoke. We just thing. got we just got the rights. I was like, we're singing through this. Hell yeah, yeah we're celebrating. Yeah. So I I, I, I I listened to the soundtrack in the car to kind of try to like familiarize myself with it. I hadn't done a show in a very, very, very long time. I was like, but I don't want to make a fool out of myself. I don't know what to expect with any of these folks. It came out and I ended up just really liking it and – watched the um, version of the, the the revival on YouTube. Mm. Um, I ended up watching that. Um, and I, I thought it was fine. I think just as I got older and maybe just with my experiences trying to make it as a musician, the, the idea of writing something that like left kind of like a lasting legacy, just trying to find like the one song that resonated with people. That was my initial thing that kind of was really my motivator when I first started. And then when, my grandmother got sick towards the end of it. It kind of took a, took a shift, but uh, that, that YouTube version was the one that I, uh, the one that resonated with me the most Uh, even the movie. Like I felt, I felt it was fine for what it was. I didn't have like the nostalgic feelings that some of, some of my fellow castmates had because I only watched it that one time, but I've, I liked I liked what felt raw in the version that I watched on YouTube. I, I'm I'm definitely somebody who strives to hit like every note that I can, like right on. Like I try to be like right on top. I, I don't try I try to hit everything tight. But 
at the same time too, I can respect and I know when there's a moment to kind of just be raw and emote and kind of let things go through. And it doesn't matter if it's a little off a little bit, if you feel something and it's real. And that was what I got from that YouTube version. So I'm going to say that's my favorite one. Okay. Bailey, what you got? Oh, I, I did mine, right? Did you? <laughs> yeah, it feels like a lifetime yeah, ago. Yeah, but. Yeah, okay, <laughs> that's before we started with the Kristen show. Sorry, yes. I forgot about that. Jeremy, did I skip over you? <laughs> I did. That's who we Sorry, I had to take care of the kids Poor first. Mark. What you got? <laughs> Typical. Typical. Oof. So, um, <laughs> um, that's why I was passed as Mark. Yeah. <laughs> we love you, buddy. Right? Um, Keep it on the camera where you belong. What the hell are you doing? Oh. Right? right? <laughs> so. Ooh. I. Well, my love of Rent started by listening to the soundtrack, okay? That was the first. Somebody introduced it to me, and I heard Rent, the song, and I was like, all right, this is cool, this is cool. And then I heard Tango Maureen, and I just thought it was so cool that I would get to say fuck on stage if I ever got past <laughs> this. Mark. Yeah. Um, so from that point on, it was a dream role. And then when I graduated <laughs> from college, my parents took my brother and I up to New York, and that was the final show we got to see. And it was like one of those like moments, oh and yeah. I was in the second row, oh, just oh my there. Gosh. Like I got to experience oh rent. Yeah. Um, wow, so that was my big graduation gift. Oh, that's um, a good one. Yeah. So it was amazing. Um, and then I got to see it again when it came to DC on tour mm -hmm. with Anthony and Adam wow. oh in their roles, oh and <laughs> I geeked out because oh, I got. Yeah. My God, rightfully so. <laughs> yeah, I got Anthony's autograph. Yeah, they were only and subbing on that tour, I think, or they were only doing like a they were only doing week. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. so I yeah they were doing like a two week walking spot. in the door. Exactly. Right. I wouldn't have even, like, yeah. <laughs> even had to do anything. The fact that I got to meet him afterwards, oh, meet yeah. his autograph. I was oh, like, gosh. I want to meet you. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. I want to do what you right. just did. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, so yeah, to say that this is a dream role of mine is an understatement because it has been for many years because I'm old. As we have pointed out, Durr. because I grew Durr. up Durr. Yeah. singing and performing to Grease the movie, not yeah. <laughs> Rent oh, the that's movie. Okay. When they when they were we talking about too. being ten years old watching the movie, I, I feel you, Jeremy. Yeah. Well, yeah. I'm, I'm glad you're there. <laughs> right here. Yeah. But yes, it was um, great for forty couple. Single, One. whatever. Robbie. <laughs> I'm just saying, look, it was a compliment. Mm -hmm. Thank you. We didn't even have to bring Robbie. 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 That's all right. We're, 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 <laughs> we're closer Robbie to 40 than we are to 20. That's true. You're catching up. That's very Not true. Dark, yeah. um, but yeah. I did see the movie, obviously. Yes, I went to the movie theater and saw it. And it was like, you know, it was geek out worthy because yeah. it was like, oh my gosh, I saw Cried this. And, uh, and I, you know, crying and yeah. loving <laughs> the show. And it's been amazing. And I unfortunately did not have the opportunity to audition for this the first round. I also didn't actually get to go see it because I was already cast in other shows and performing in other shows, but I did get to watch the recording. And this goes back to you, Kristen, because <laughs> it all does. the highlight of that show for me was <laughs> Take me or leave me. Take me or leave me, like, without a doubt. Without a doubt. Yep. Yep. No offense yep. to anybody else. Nope. <laughs> Sorry. You all. This was but not planned. That on was the moment that I was like, yep. damn, yep. I get to be on stage with that. Yep. Like, oh, I yep. was so excited. And oh, I, I'm just blown away by the talent of this cast and mm -hmm. working with everyone. Like, this is going to be a phenomenal show. Yeah. One night only, you better get your tickets. Get your tickets, please. You're going to miss out. Why haven't you gotten them? Tuesdays to New Friday. Are you watching the break? It, it is. is. It's 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 done. Done. You can always take off on Wednesday. <laughs> So, you know, did, Robbie, Grace. Did, did you want to talk about Grace? I, I didn't know. I haven't talked to you. Yet. Um, Robbie, um, go ahead. Okay. So, so I, I think my, my favorite is, is the original. I think Chris Columbus did a great job on the film adaptation. Um, you know, leaving out contact, leave, you know, th those, those small things, Halloween, yeah. uh, my, my biggest issue with the movie was, was leaving out Halloween for Mark actually, yeah. cause yeah. that's, yeah. for me, that's Mark's turning point where he's finally facing his yeah. issues yeah. because he's always a loner. He's always behind the camera, you know, but he never deals with himself. Nobody ever asked Mark how he is. Yeah. He is the right? loneliest person. In so, the so he, he truly is like Mark's always checking on Roger. Take your AZT, you know, hey, you need to get out, yep. you know, hey, what, yep. tell me about this Mimi girl, Mimi's chasing it, you know, Maureen 
is calling him after cheating on him a thousand Stop times saying, Hey, yeah. do me a favor. He's like, yeah. Hey, I'm right there. Yeah, right. She never says, thank you. Nope. No. You know what I mean? He, he's, him. he's met with Joanne being, being a bitch to him for no reason. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? So yeah. like, but Halloween is Mark's turning point where he's like, I'm viewing all of this on film. Right. Like all this means is at the end of this, I'm by myself. Mm-hmm. And he's finally facing that. And, and when that was taken out of, of the film, I understand why I, I I was a filmmaker for many years. I get it. You had to cut that down and, and really just you know hone in on on the the the, the key points. Um, I think that was a mistake that Chris Columbus left it out. And really, to to me, it was it was a huge mistake. I would have rather seen you know over the moon go personally. <laughs> but, um, but I'm not. Yeah, not, <laughs> but, not in our not not in ours. Not, not in ours. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, <laughs> but I, I mean, I think, you know, but the, the live version, so so I, I would say the original is is my favorite. And I have seen it twice. Um, not on Broadway or anything, but I've seen touring companies. Um, the, and the live version, again, just gives it so much more. There's, there's something special about seeing that show. And I think no matter where you see it, as long as it's a good production, I mean, we've all seen garbage production yeah. of, this, of this show. Yeah, but yeah. A, 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 good, a good production of this is always something special. Mm-hmm. And it almost seems like, you know, you, you you walk into, you know, when you walk in to see the show, and it even happened with our show, you walk in and you just kind of take your seat and you get excited about it. You, know, you kind of start to feel the, the energy start to move in amongst, amongst the, uh, the the audience. You know, I think the audience was the loudest I've ever heard pre-curtain yeah. before. Like, everybody's just excited. They're really stoked for it. And then by the time they leave, it's a completely different relationship. Yeah. It's a completely different mm-hmm. feeling whenever they leave. And it, it's, I, I really truly feel like people leave and they they jump on their phones hey mom love you mm-hmm. hey yeah. hey you know yeah. their brothers their sisters their cousins their, their long lost friends whomever um it brings people together dustin and i didn't talk for a long time i think one of the first times i hit you up to come hang out was to come do the show yeah. because yeah, what, what, i think it might have been because dustin and i had a falling out and we didn't talk for a minute you know what i mean like it, just, just being just <laughs> <laughs> just just being I mean, me, me and Dustin. That is a multi part yeah, that, story. Yeah. 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 Podcast I mean, look, me, me and Dustin have been, have been best friends for, for over 20 now. years, right? We went to high school together. We went to college together. You know, we've been best friends forever. We had a falling out. It is what it is. But when I found out I was doing the show, Dustin had to work his ass off because he didn't get it for free. He had to audition against everybody else. But my first call was him. I was like, I need you to get back into this because you are Roger. You know what I mean? And he came and mm-hmm. it reconnected us in a different way that we hadn't, we hadn't been on stage together for 10 years, mm-hmm. maybe more, you know what I mean? And it's, it's, it's different. You know, when, when you, when you go see the show, it's, it's the same thing. You see it and it's, it, I think, I don't think anybody can watch a show that has, has a heart that can walk away from it and not go, Damn, I think I, I think I fucked something up. I need to I need to make a phone call. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I need I yeah. need to reach mm-hmm. out to somebody. Right. I don't think any, I don't think anybody can. And you know, you're not you don't get that from the movie the same way because there's there's just those pieces missing. Um, so so I would say the original at the live was a piece of shit. Um, <laughs> it was. You didn't like I, Vanessa Hudgens? Come on. No, oh I, I called I called the live a piece of shit in my curtain speech before our show. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it was it was garbage. It was garbage. Um, no, I didn't. It was terrible. Um, <laughs> Valentina was was uh, uh, an atrocity, like Rob. monstrosity, awful. Rob. Like there was no reason. Rob. Again, she's again, beautiful. Bra- bra- beautiful. 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 No, beautiful. No, no doubt about it. But as soon as she opened her mouth, I wanted to kill myself. Yeah. Um, uh, and I felt so bad for for, for 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 Brandon. Like I felt so bad. Yeah, for right, like, right. It's like, He's damn, like miles you are, high. Yeah, yeah, right. Like you are, and he got he got <laughs> fucked twice. He got screwed in Rent and and Superstar. Oh. He was doing heaven on their mind. John Legend comes out and people just start screaming. Right. And yeah. it's just like, this guy's singing his ass off and right. nobody's paying attention. He's, he's with, he's, he's on monkey bars with, with, with Valentina. who you can't sing. Yeah. She can't carry a tune in a bucket and she's there. And it's just, it, uh, again, you were great on drag no, race, but, but never, never, ever laugh. be, yeah. never, ever be in theater ever again. It was terrible. Unless um, you get some vocal lessons. Yeah, yeah. A lot of them for like many, many years. Um, call Billy. He'll take care of it. From Lee Manuel. Uh, 
No, don't do that. Oh my God. Lin Manuel might be slightly better than Valentina. Maybe. Oh, he, he, wow. Um, he, wow. Like That's big well. words for yeah. me. Wow. Yeah. He might. He might be better than 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 her by about this much. All uh, right. So we know who's so, not doing the next act master. Yeah, hey, yes, exactly. <laughs> um, but um, but yeah, I didn't I didn't like the live at all. I thought I, I and and going deeper than just the talent. I think the direction was poor. Um, you know, I, I think it was just kind of all over the place. They wanted to make it something that it's not. Yeah. And they wanted to make it, this is going to sound weird, bigger than it is. You know what I mean? Like, the, like there was so much extra that didn't need. Right. Yeah. Like it's, it is, it's a standalone. Like right. it, it's big enough as is that emotion is the only thing you need to yep. bring that's big. And, and, and it's almost it, disrespectful to a, right. yeah, to, to try to yeah. right. do it's, it. It's not, it's not about, you know, millions of dollars that they spent on a set that, that they could have, just done in a warehouse. And it wasn't and, even and shot well right. 90% of the time. You know, I mean, it, it just, the constant pans and weird oh, yeah. parts it, of the it, state. It, it, they, they, tried, they tried to turn it into a rock concert, which I understand. It's a rock opera. I get yes. that part. But they tried to turn it into a rock concert. And it was, it was it Fox that did it or, or NBC? Fox. I think it was I think Fox. It was Fox. Who, wh whoever, whatever studio did it, it was, it, was, it was terrible. And I think it was doomed from the start. Um, and then you start adding Mario into the mix. Where the fuck's he been for the last 20 years that you just throw him in there? Jordan Fisher, God bless his heart. His heart. I, I he mean, just, he just, it's oh. just, just dead in the face yeah, during yeah. that entire show. I mean, he has grown show. so much. I will say, like, has, seeing him from that, I do appreciate his little yeah. glow up too. But in that, He's, at that moment, well, that was not. Yeah, different. it's, it, they're, they're two it. different they're, mediums. And you yeah. people don't understand. The so if, if they would have shot it as yeah. if it was a, a theater production that they right. were just shooting on stage yeah. and putting it out there, I think it would have been better. Yeah. Um, and I think they would have yeah. been better off choosing nobodies for that entire yeah. show. No, the I extra, agree. the extra pomp but, and circumstance took away from the authenticity. Right. Yeah, yeah, There's yeah. already a palpable electricity to that show, yep. especially when everybody is connected, but with how disjointed everything was yeah. from a production production standpoint down to not having a backup plan to when Brennan Hunt got injured mm -hmm. to there there was just there were so many flaws from that standpoint it all came from it becoming too big it was already great where it was yeah. and when when there's that connection with the people that are working on it like you don't need it but yeah. you, I, that's like I said, my biggest gripe with it was that I did not feel a connection at all. Yeah, and and I told Dust, I was like, if you break your ankle, I hope you know you're wobbling on stage. <laughs> yeah, I said, we'll get a scooter. There was never right. a doubt. There but, was never a doubt. But I mean, and There's I get it. He got right. dude, dude got injured. I get it. You know, <laughs> things happen. But I think I, I it was just due from the start. Everybody that was in Rent originally was a nobody. Mm -hmm. Right, they yeah. they, yeah. they were nobody on Broadway. Idina Menzel was not Idina Menzel. Adam mm -hmm. Pascal was not Adam right. Pascal. You know, Wilson was not Wilson. Uh, um, um, you know, none of them were were celebrities. They were not big, and that's again what made it authentic, and it made it different. And and if you go back and watch, there's a documentary called No Day But Today, that's about um, Jonathan Larson's life, writing Brent, it getting turned into a movie. They said specifically they were looking for nobodies. Mm -hmm. People, they were going to CBGBs and they were going to, to clubs looking for a Roger. Yeah, the cast they calls, they were explicit. They were like, we don't want a musical theater person. No. We're looking for very person. specifically. Yeah. They were getting they were getting resumes sent from from people who were who were Broadway, Broadway stars. And they were like, nope, I don't want that. They were going out to clubs to look, and that's where they found Adam Pascal. They yeah. plucked him off of stage with his band and they said, Hey, come do this. And, and they did it. Wilson was working as a dispatcher. Wilson was working oh, at a dis he was working at one. Wilson was working yeah. at a one, two, he was working at a as a <laughs> dispatch office um yeah. for for a maintenance company for for a property management company. Oh my gosh. That's what he was doing. He was working third shift. Whoa. And and he became he, he won a Tony Award. Yeah. Yeah. You know, That's like Je Jesse, Jesse, Jesse Martin, Martin <laughs> Jesse Martin was serving tables at the diner Jonathan Larson worked at. Wow. Wow. That's you know what I mean? The only ones that really did anything, Idina was a wedding singer. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I, I think uh, um, Tay had done a couple things on Broadway and left Broadway and said that he wanted to focus on TV. Mm -hmm. And then this brought him back. Mm -hmm. But again, he didn't have huge success on Broadway before Rent. None mm -hmm. of them did. And I think that's where the live really messed up because they could have gotten a lot of talent if they would have yeah. put the time and the energy 
which again, they spent a year and a half pimping it that they were going to yeah, do it. Right. If they would have put the time and energy to go out and find those people to make it authentic. I mean, seeing Valentina, Valentina struggle on stage, I was just like, this is, this is pathetic. Just go, Vanessa, just go, just go. Why are you, why are you flying in the air? Why are we doing this? Yeah. Like, where would Maureen have had the money or the right. ability? Wait, so you're saying to, I can't fly in No, direction? you're not going to, you're not going to, <laughs> going to like, we're, like, it, it made no sense. Where's, like, this is, the, her stage manager is a lawyer who has never done anything with right. theater ever before right. in her life, but somehow got her flying through yeah. the air. We yeah. can't patch a mic. We're not getting right. right. It was yeah, like, like, sorry. like come no the fuck sense. on. Like it made no yeah. sense. It was yeah. again. It just. It just. It was so. It was so not authentic and just a, a fucking train wreck. And I. And you can't. I don't think you can find it anywhere. It's not on sale on like DVD or like no. anything. Because yeah, I think Fox knew like <laughs> that. They're was like, bad. oh man. <laughs> well, and then didn't Fox do? Grinch too, and that was a piece uh, of that shit. was terrible too. That, that was, was yeah. spooky. So they, Another so if your TV company stopped doing place. theater, go away, <laughs> like just stop, like do what you're good at. Yeah. Host your American Idols Leave and the Voice and yeah. and your TV shows. Let theater be theater. I would I would have rather see at once a year a Broadway show on TV on Broadway that's professionally yeah. taken. Yeah. That's what I would rather see. Then oh we're gonna get Mario and we're gonna get you know, this person this person yeah. and they're gonna come get why wow, Carrie Underwood I love you but why like oh, yeah. you know what I mean like just stop <laughs> they seem to stop they seem to stop that one I thought it sounded music I thought good. it was good I'm a, I'm a big Stephen Moore fan but and I thought Carrie Underwood did well but but again just stop yeah. let's get people who are trained in this yeah. in, in this discipline because it's not the discipline is oh, not no. just. You, you just crossover. Just because you act on TV or film doesn't mean you can do theater. Just because you're a good actor in theater doesn't mean you're going to do well in TV or film. Right. It's, right. it's just it's a reality. Yeah. What and Hugh Jackman. Hugh, Jack oh. Hugh, Hugh Jackman is and a even god among that, men. I mean, who don't love what you do. Yeah. Right. Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> but I think that's anything, though. I mean, yeah. I mean, there's going to be people that have their their things that they're good at, and people that you think are really good at something, and then you're like. Mm, Try Which it. is Let's totally never fine. Do it again, and right. now we know that we're never, hopefully, ever going to do a rent like that again. And hopefully, it's a learning lesson for for all of us. But I promise right. you, rent November second at the at the Maryland Theater here in Hagerstown is going to be well worth it. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Al Martin, I don't, I don't know if yes, people know yes, Al yes. or not. Al, Al, first of all, knows everybody. He does everything. He sits on like 40 boards of directors. He's, he does <laughs> he everything. The year that he's, I, yeah, he's, he's Mr. Hagerstown, yeah. right? Um, he said it was the, when he came and saw our version of Rent the first mm -hmm. time, there's a comment on one of my posts. He said, yeah. this is the best version of Rent I've ever seen. And I've seen the original Broadway production. Wow. And he said he has seen over 30 productions of, of Rent. I mean, we have Kristen. We do. It was Kristen. Exactly. <laughs> we have Kristen. I'm telling you. But no, but no, like honestly, like what, what we're putting together again is real. It's authentic. We're a real family, you know? And, and like, unfortunately, Jen couldn't be here today and Jeff couldn't be here today. But like, this is, you know, we, we're always with each other. We're yeah. always talking to each other. We, we work together. And, and the authenticity that, that we bring to the stage is is so much different than you're going to see anywhere else, mm -hmm. it, in, in my opinion. Um, and, and all of us, again, are doing this for, for a different reason. You know, there's, there's something that motivates us that's, that's far better than, than anything, you know, that, that's, that's been done, I think. So, Robbie, this next one's for you, and for those of you who were in the cast in the previous version, is this one, this one night only, going to be exactly the same as last year's, or are there changes that you tweaked along the way, or maybe you, you had a different vision this time? No, I mean, there's we're, we're staying true to um, to the production in the sense of, you know, there's not going to be any any huge major changes, um, but there there are things that we've tweaked and that we've changed and. I think with with working together between the three of us who did the first time, I think we all talk to each other every rehearsal, like, hey, what do you think about this? We're yeah. moving this here. Mm -hmm. And just kind of, you know, working together and then working, you know, our our new family in and, and getting them and, and seeing their strengths. You know, Hope's strengths are different from our original media strengths mm -hmm. and, and and Jeremy's strengths are different from from Ryan's strengths when, when he was doing. You know, so so kind of making those tweaks and moving things around, um, you know, is so it's not going to be it's not going to be the same. You're gonna you're gonna see the same show, but it's 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 different in in different ways. So if you saw it the first time, the second time is going to be, I think, even better. Mm -hmm. Truthfully, yeah. yeah. I have Billy for God's sake. <laughs> I think I think I can I can speak for all of us. If I'm wrong, please jump in. But 
I don't think any of us are interested creatively in just doing a 100% rehash uh, of something right. that we did no, before, no. especially something that happened a year and a half, almost two years ago. Mm -hmm. We were different people now. Uh, yes. We've we've grown. Uh, and just, mm -hmm. just as a creative, the, there's, there's nothing fun in just rehashing and doing the yeah. same thing over again. One of the first messages I sent out to Robbie before we even started the rehearsal process was like, Hey, I was like, I know we're both super, super busy. Um, this said between work and his scheduled act and my work schedule and working on music. I said, we just moved into a new house together. So we, I said, our schedules were just crazy. And like, we didn't know when they were going to align. I was like, even if it's just over message, I was like, I want to talk about some things that I would like to do differently this time. Maybe things that I didn't see the first time that I see differently now. Uh, just I uh, was like things that I think creatively might be cool to do since we're only doing this one night and one night only. Um, I was like, we have different people this time around. I think it would benefit us to do what we did before, but like maybe kind of approach it in a different light. And I was like, obviously I was like, I was like, not only are you my friend, I was like, you are directing the show too. I was like, I don't want to, I don't want to do something that goes away from what your vision is for it. Mm -hmm. I was like, but I think it would benefit everybody involved as we've grown over the last couple of years to maybe kind of look at this through maybe a different lens mm -hmm. and see what we can do to add value this time around. I know there are people that are going to see it this time that didn't see it the first time, mm -hmm. but I know there are people that are going to see it that saw it mm -hmm. yeah. a year and a half ago too. I was like, Time, times are tough for everybody. I was like, and if we're going to ask them to spend money and be out late on a Tuesday night, Tuesday's the new Friday. Um, mm -hmm. So make sure you're out. Happy um, hours everywhere. Yes. Yeah. Um, I think we we owe it to them to give them something yeah. a little bit different this time mm -hmm. around. Um, and just not a total subject change, but um, we were working on um, some – like quotes for like an interview that we did for Broadway world. And we were all kind of in a group message together and we got to see what everybody was submitting into that. And some of the questions they were asking were similar to the ones that we're doing right now. And one of the ones for the new cast members were uh, talking about um, what it feels like coming in to this show this time around where when we did it the first time, we literally spent a year together. Uh, so it was, it was kind of, it was kind of crazy that we weren't, rehearsing straight for a year it was just like maybe one or two days a month here and there until we ramped up close to showtime but obviously like there's something that time can't replace mm -hmm. but at the same time too i want to make sure that you guys know billy we're just meeting you today but but i said just on my end i can say with 100 percent certainty that we don't need the time because I can tell that we're all on the same page of what this means to us, uh, right. putting out, putting out a quality product, not just for ourselves, but for the people that are coming mm -hmm. to see a show too. Mm -hmm. And even whether it's at a rehearsal or outside of a rehearsal, whether it's just talking or actually working through something, we're going to build it. Mm -hmm. it's, a lot of it's already there naturally, oh, yeah. but we're going to build it. The next two weeks are going to be just insane mm -hmm. and don't mm -hmm. miss november 2nd yeah. can, I, can i jump in one real quick for chris the, the other thing too for me to oh, okay well, cool. uh, the, 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 other, the other thing for me too is this selfishly for me was dream role i didn't want the role of collins we had a collins that dropped and then i asked like four or five different people in the cat or two or three people in the cast and another four or five people outside the cast to come do the role and I got no's across the board. So I was forced to do it because it, it, Brad quit in January, mm -hmm. right before mm -hmm. we were really ramping up to do yeah. anything and quit. So I, I was like, I'm stuck. I have nobody that can do this role. I can't find anybody. I guess I'm going to do it. Um, so for me, and, I, and again, did I want to do it? No. Was I excited to? Yeah, I guess. It, it was a role that I really wanted to play. I got to do it already. So for me at this point, it is for like Jeremy. Mm -hmm. Right. Who this is his dream role, and he's been wanting to do this role for 25 years. Is that that's accurate, right? Pretty damn. Cool. <laughs> you know what I mean? He's been wanting to do this role, and this is this is his one opportunity, you know, to to do it, and possibly his only opportunity to do it. So for me, it is about Jeremy, you know, and and it is about Hopi, who Mimi's her dream role. Oh yeah. So 
we got to live it already. We right. did it. Right. And that's amazing. And we're and we're excited to do it again because you guys wouldn't stop emailing me asking me. Um, and I got really tired of it. But for us, it's for them too. And and it's not about, oh, you're not in the original group. <laughs> no, it's like you want to do this, you ready to do this? Let's go. We're we're gonna do it with you. And and I think that's part of it. And the other thing too, when it comes to, you know, is this show gonna be different from the last time? It will be, but we spent a year rehearsing it. I spent almost a year before that studying the script and we did the show so authentic to what it comes to, what the show actually is. Um, And again, signed off on by Wilson, you know, who said, this is exactly what it should be always. This is what the show is. And I spent so much time really researching the show, putting it together and, and getting it ready to go to the point where it was, we could sit back and really say, yeah, there were some things that weren't perfect. That's fair. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's, 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 any, live live, that's yeah. any live theater yeah. show. But looking at the product as a whole, mm-hmm. it was exactly what it was supposed to be. Yeah. And so is there going to be a lot of changes? No, because we worked on it for so long. Yeah. The script hasn't changed for 25 years. It's the same thing. Yeah. You know, so there are going to be a lot of things that you're going to see again, you know, but know that that's how it's supposed to be. Mm-hmm. You know, we're not going to take something that's perfect and, and just the way it's supposed to be and be like, oh, let's hack this up and, yeah. you know, we're going to turn this into, you know, a futuristic, you know, uh, right. spaceship that we're doing this shit. Like, yeah. you know, we're not, we're not going to do anything yeah. crazy. It's, it's, it, this isn't, this isn't a show that has that kind of room right. to do anything with. It's the nineties. It's New York city. It's, 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 you know, a lot of fun, a lot of happiness, and then punch you in the face with some mm-hmm. darkness real quick um, and, and brings you to reality real fast. And there's there's not much to change about it, mm-hmm. you know. So I think I think the show as a whole, um, you know, people that are going to come see it. The 400 plus already bought tickets, and I'm sure the you know, several hundred that will continue to buy tickets over the course of the next couple of weeks. Um, you're 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 not going to be disappointed. You're going to see what you what you expect to see when you see Rent. Yeah, and I think that's that's most important with this show specifically. All right. So we do have a couple of things coming up at uh, both ACT and the ACT Black Box Studio yeah. uh, that we want to talk about here real quick. Uh, first up, we have Out of the Box. Uh, that is a paint night coming up at the ACT Black Box Studio. Uh, before, we had one with the Sanderson sisters. Super duper excited over that one. I know a couple of people who went to that and had a blast. I mean, these people are not painters. Let me be honest, let me be clear. <laughs> these are not painters, but they went, they had fun. They surprised themselves with what they could do. And as you can see up on the screen right now, we have a cute little gnome. That cute, that's the creepiest painting. fucking thing I've ever seen in my life. Very I think cute. <laughs> So you too can can paint the creepy or cute gnome, uh, depending on what you want to do, and have a couple of drinks while you're there. Have a great time. Bring a friend. That, that makes it the best way for the people who bring friends and uh, make a night out of it. Uh, after that, we do have Cabaret coming up. We just had auditions for Cabaret. Everybody loves this show. It's going to be a blast. I know a couple of people who auditioned. They're also super excited. We've got dream roles going here, so they're going to put everything they've got into it and uh, make a night out of it. It's a great date night. Come on out. Uh, that's going to be in January. Uh, that's the Maryland Theater, right? Mm-hmm. All right. Come on out to the Maryland Theater to see Cabaret. Tickets are on sale uh, actforall.org or through the Maryland Theater. We also have Elf coming back. Uh, it's our, our what new annual show that we've got. Oh, uh, let's do it. Buddy the Elf right here. Buddy and Jovi. Oh, that's right. And Jovi. I'm sorry. And Jovi. Absolutely. So uh, you, you see them here. You love them. And uh, you can see them in two very, very Ooh, different yeah. shows. Yeah. 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 Very different. Yeah. Uh, not going to drop any A month away from each other. No. Yeah. no, no, no. no. Yeah. Just come, some son of a nutcracker. That's, yeah, that's yeah. right. So, yeah. so come see oh, them with my. just the adults in Wren, and then bring the family to see them in Elf coming up December 4th and 5th at the Maryland Theater. Again, tickets on sale right now. Selling like crazy. That's right. We also have the Casino Night coming. The Casino Oof. Night is going to be a big fundraiser. It's going to be a big night with big fun as well. Come Gus is going to come be a degenerate and lose all his money at the blackjack table. Don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, 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 I'm 
up in blackjack right now. Are you? Yeah. <laughs> on your phone? Because every time I've gone with you, you got yeah. Well, now, now I live in, now <laughs> I live in, live in PA. I, live now. In, I, live in PA. Oh. I can I can gamble live from from the. Uh, there yeah, it is. The that could pay your mortgage though, Kristen. That's right. That's right. So we're, we're oh, I don't know. It's yummy. Yeah. <laughs> so you pay a fee, oh, you get a bunch of funny money, and you get to play with this funny money until it's gone. Uh, you potentially get more as you go. You kick some drinks back, and you have a great time. Yeah. And there is a real grand prize that is not funny, and that <laughs> is a trip. Um, two day, one night in New York City. Two Paid for by Authentic Community Theater, along with a pair of Broadway tickets. I'm sure of your choice. As the kids would say these days, uh, say less. Yes. <laughs> yes. There you go. <laughs> we also have coming up Broadway Babes. Hey. Hey. Wait a minute. <laughs> Broadway Babes is going to be a night of fun. Over at uh, at the Act Black Box Studio, come on up. Make sure you purchase your tickets, and <laughs> this is going to be a show that you will not soon forget with the Broadway base and some oh, who yes. you recognize and who you know. We also have <laughs> a tuna Christmas coming up. Uh, this is another uh, holiday show that you are sure not to miss. This one. This is going to be at the Act Black Box Studio as well. If you're not familiar with the Act Black Box Studio, it is an intimate environment, 75 seats max. I mean, you are right there at the stage uh, seeing every expression on their faces. And this is a show that's going to be one that uh, that really puts you in the mood, that puts you in the, the, the holiday spirit. So make sure you come on out and see a tune of Christmas. Wrong, 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 yeah, wrong. wrong. Not that mood. <laughs> yeah, not that mood. <laughs> <laughs> different strokes for different hey, folks, hey, right? <laughs> Matilda Jr. is uh, based on the book uh, by Roald Dahl. Um, it's an amazing show. If you're not familiar with the music with revolting children, I mean, it, it's an amazing yeah, it's show. Fun. The cast okay. has been placed, and it's going to be a, a, a fantastic cast performing for the kids, for the families. Uh, if you want to bring out the entire family, make sure you purchase tickets now because this is one that is going to sell uh, January 7th and 8th at the Maryland Theater, Matilda Jr. And uh, yeah, that that's we've got a lot coming up. If you're ever curious about any of the shows that we have coming up, uh, go to actforall.org. They are all listed there. You can purchase tickets through actforall.org or uh, for any of our other shows in Maryland Theater or the Black Box Studio. Uh, before we kick off, I am curious, with Rent, there are so many highs. There are so many lows. What is your favorite part of the show? Didn't we all already say Kristen? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> and that's the show. <laughs> Billy, you've been kind of quiet. Today. I'm really curious your take. Yeah, on six it. hour drive. If I was yeah. five, yeah, I'm gonna like five. <laughs> I mean, getting out of the city was a B I T C bitch. Uh, bitch. We're all lying so much. Um, favorite part. Favorite part. Okay, I'm gonna be um brave here. Um, I feel like because like as I feel like this answer is semi self indulgent. I don't want it to be. I'll cover you reprise. Okay. Like I know that that's like when I just get to kind of like for no those of you who just get to like yeah, yeah ghost <laughs> off, mm -hmm. but that gets me together every time. Mm -hmm. At that 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 moment, and it's just that's a tug of your heartstrings. That's yeah. a tug of your heartstrings moment, and I think that's just something really special. And again, and not to, I'm not even in relation to the fact that I am very fortunate to get to play Angel, but just mm -hmm. that loss of that kind of pivotal um, heart kind of a person mm -hmm. or, um, mm -hmm. it, it, it's just, I think, I think it's, and, and I have seen footage of Mr. Robbie do it and yes, there were tears. So mm -hmm. looking mm -hmm. forward to it. Yeah. Robbie, speak up. Um, honestly, um, of, of our production over the moon, um, is, is my favorite part of the show. Truthfully. I mean, it's, it's, it's so much fun. She had Mickey Mouse on a fucking noose, and I was dead. Um, so it was Mickey Mouse. <laughs> was. Sorry, Disney. Um, save your fucking emails. I don't care. Um, but no, over over the moon is 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 one of my favorite parts. Is is my favorite part of the show um, that that Kristen that Kristen did. I, I've I think you know what she did, and just sitting back and looking at it. I mean, it kind of sounds shitty for a director to be like, oh yeah, I had nothing to do with that, you know. But like. Sitting back as a director and watching Kristen grow 
like her first lead role was with us. Yeah. There were people who were stupid. Yeah. Like a lot of casting directors yeah. who were dumb and didn't and and she say was she names. was <laughs> <laughs> Don't say their names. Don't say their names. Um no, I I won't no. say names. But you know, seeing her grow and come out of her box and sitting back and watching her do that last time was was incredible to be like, holy shit, like like kind of like how we said, like that where the Fuck yeah. that come from, yeah. Kristen. You're like, finally, like you could, she's one of those people, I don't know, like being on stage with her, you can see that it's there. And like from being on stage early with her, it's like, you see it and you just like want to pull that out so bad. But like watching her find it in herself and really like come to terms with it and be like, all right, you know what? Here it is. Here's my whole butt. There's, like there it is. There's confidence. That's, that yeah. is just. Um, there's confidence. The and then there's what Kristen did. Yeah. <laughs> and it took was, me a long time to get there. And it was, and it was beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. And the Thank fact you. that she pulled her ass out when I wasn't, if she would have said, no, I don't want to do it, I'd no. be like, cool. No, no. I, don't I, know how that went. I, I think it was, yes, you have to. But, no. but see, That's if, if you would have, if, <laughs> yeah. if Kristen would have fought me on it and been like, I don't feel comfortable, yeah. I, of course, yeah. would have been like, okay. Yes, yes. Right. But, but she was like, it. but she was like, I love you, Kristen. Um, but no, like, you know, what, 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 but, but point, point being is, is like, you know, to, it was, it was my favorite part to see her, to see Kristen just shoot to the fucking moon, literally. Yeah. Over it. What'd you say? Over it. Yeah. <laughs> Some might we say. Um, but no, that's, that's my favorite part is to sit back and just go, you know what? She came here and was just kind of in this little box of like, she's, you know, you're going to be like the pretty girl, the, the, the girl next door kind of. And then to see you take that role and oh. just fly, put a rocket to your back and shoot. It yep. was, it, it's, it's my favorite. It's like being tied yeah. to the hood of a yellow pickup truck. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Wow. <laughs> John has it there. Tied to the yellow. Oh, yeah. All right. So what you got? What's your favorite? Oh, my. <laughs> my favorite. I don't think it's so much a moment. I think it's like the emotional build of the show as a whole. I think it's really cool. Like, and of course, by the end, when you start getting, I don't know, I'm a sucker for like sad shit. That's my, I don't know. That's what I like. So I think by the end, when watching everyone's emotional journey kind of come to this peak, mm -hmm. and then instead of like most shows, movies, whatever, where you kind of keep things at that peak, instead where the show just takes you and literally crushes that and is like, no, you don't get to have that moment because this is what actually happens. Like this is real life. And it pulls you out of that like fantasy and having that emotional connection. I think that's why the audience gets so drawn in as well, because they're on that same journey with you. And it's all this build, 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 build until literally like the bottle just has to explode because it can't hold anymore. And instead of it going up, everything just, I mean, plummets. It's like your volcano. Everything comes up, but then it hits the ground and it hits the ground hard. Well, because it's um, like, we, they do take me or leave me and everybody goes yeah, insane. Yeah. Yeah. And it goes, and then and it then just right goes, down. Oh, Hey, by the way, here's angel. Yeah. She's, she's dying. Yep. And then you get out of one. nowhere. Mm -hmm. And from that moment on, yep. it's like mm -hmm. punch to the gut after yep. punch to the gut after, which yeah. Cope said perfectly. It's life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You have these highs, everything's going mm -hmm. good. And then boom, yeah. eviction notice. Yep. Boom, you lost yep. your job. Boom. Yep. This, and, and these things just happen. And how, how it's handled so differently mm -hmm. by every single character. Mm -hmm. I think everybody can really take a piece and go, yeah, I kind of run. Right. Right. Yeah. Roger runs. And I think I, the I music run. evokes so much of this. Yes. Like, I know, like, my favorite moment or whatever is because that music makes me really feel something. And I think yeah. something that is so strong about the show is that the music is allows you to feel those highs and those yeah. fantastic mm -hmm. moments. And you're like, I'm going to fucking rock. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then you're like, oh, God, this yeah. is so sad. Why am I feeling all these things? So, yeah. I, so really the music, I think, mm -hmm. is what ties that together. Yeah. Jeremy? Um, act one, <laughs> I would have to say La Vie Bohème mm. yeah. is, is definitely yeah. my favorite moment. Um, and in act two, it's starting with I'll Cover You Reprise mm -hmm. into Halloween, into yep. Goodbye Love, yep. because I just love that moment selfishly between Mark and Roger. Oh, yeah. And I feel so proud and honored to be on stage with Dustin doing that moment. Yeah. That it's like it, it is a dream come true, yeah. and the fact that I get to do it with you is just phenomenal. Love and I'm glad you're there too. <laughs> Since you're like, just great, <laughs> but no, for real, like yeah. 
I don't get twisted. You belong up there with them. I yeah. I love it. Yeah. I, I can't deny that. Like just that feelings and the emotions yeah. and everything that are right there. And it's like, wow, we just did that. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and, I, and I tell the cast all the time, let the emotions happen. Let the real ones out. And so often we're told as actors by our directors that we have to bottle those up yeah. and not let it get to us. Right. We have a job to do. In this show specifically, I, I tell them all the time, let it happen. Jeremy looked at me at rehearsal the other day when we were doing the finale. Yeah. He was like, he oh was like, God. he looked at me. He was like, I'm yeah. going to cry. Yeah. And I was like, I, I said, I said, good, do yeah. it. Cry. Yes. Ryan Smetzer ruined one of my shirts yeah. yes, he did. when we did it the first time because he buried his head mm -hmm. into my chest and oh. cried. You can hear it in the in the recording we have. He's just like, because <laughs> 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 his mic was still on. Well, I'm gonna try not to. And he, yeah, like, right. but, <laughs> but that's but the I'll thing. Cry. At the yeah. ending, when they, when they, when they all come back and they're watching Mark's video, and our you can you can look at the video and our cast is all sobbing. That's real. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I didn't let them watch it, watch the video at all until dress rehearsal. Yeah, nobody saw it other than me. And they look back and and um, literally, I, I had to point because we they didn't know that the video was going to play when it was going to play how it was going to play. We never talked about it. And they, they all came on and they were kind of looking at me. I was like, no, up there. And they all started watching it in front of in front of the, the, the folks from Wells House that came and and it just tears just started rolling. And and they some of them came up and apologized. I was like, no, that's what I want. That's what right. it should be. Let the emotion go. It's raw. Everything about this show is raw emotion. And when you let it go and you like be a human being. I mean, get through what you gotta get through. Right. But if if you if you feel like you're you need to cry at that point, cry. Get it out. And and again, authenticity is is super important with the show. And and you know, it's. I think Dustin had it. Dustin had a moment at one point during one of the. I mean, you were going through your own shit. Um, we all were. I mean, Chris, like all of us had that moment. I know. I broke down. I think it was. Closing night, I broke down the dressing room and Dustin had to come in and like get me, snap me back in. So we were about ready to do goodbye love. And I was, I was a freaking mess. And I mean, but, but again, when all that stuff happens, we're all there for each other. Yeah. I ruined a $40 shirt for <laughs> Ryan Smetzer, that rat bastard. Um, <laughs> you still owe him. Right. You owe yeah. him 40 bucks. Yeah. Um, you know, but, but no, like, I think that's another part that, that I'm, that makes me love this show so much and, and love this cast so much. Because we are all so close. It's not yeah. fake. What you're seeing on stage mm -hmm. is real. This is this is a family that we build, chosen family, and, and how important it really is. Um, and we have it here. Kristen? Um, uh, for me, my favorite part is Seasons of Love. Um, it means something really special to me. Um, most people that were in like the original cast, and some of you guys know, but... Um, during the rehearsal process, um, I lost someone that was really, really important to me, um, a family friend who was more like a little sister to me, um, who died in a car accident when she was only 13. And it broke me. And she was very excited to come see this show. She had a countdown on her phone. And I was playing her favorite character. So it was a lot. And her family actually asked me to sing Seasons of Love at her funeral. So I did. So I know I'm sorry to bring it down, but it's, it means a lot to me every time that I can sing it because it reminds me of her and reminds me what the show is about for me. Because at 13, she understood what it means to show people love and be there for your friends and your family and all those things. So she was my biggest inspiration. So I think of her every time I sing it, it takes me back to that moment, but that's okay. Um, so for me, it's just an honor to sing that for her every single time. Um, so you guys saying all these very nice things to me about my performance means a lot because it was all for her. So that helps me know that she, you did her proud. So oh, yeah. I wow. tried very hard. <laughs> so yeah. Wow. Nobody's gonna outwork Kristen. No. I'll fucking say it in, in any role. I mean, <laughs> Thank nobody, you. Nobody's outworking Thank her. You. None. <laughs> anyway, sorry to make it sad. No. No, we did. We did. We dedicated the whole show to her. To, to pay you did. Me. And the first time I saw that yeah. video and her picture popped up, stop me. Her, her family came and, and brought did. him up on stage. Mm -hmm. You know, it was, you know, That's again, it's, it's about, it's about loving people, yeah. you know, and, and 
when Kristen told me about Peyton, I was like, yeah, that's what it's, that's what it's about. That's it. it literally. You know, I never got to meet her. You know, and that's and that sucks because mm-hmm. I would have I would have loved to. I would have put her in the pit in a, in a second. Sorry, I'm gonna cry, guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Let it out, right? Um, but but like it's it's stuff like that where we were all going through something. You know, from Dustin, myself, Kristen, Ryan, we were all yeah. going through something. But it made it easier because we were doing this. Mm-hmm. I mean, at least for me, it made yeah. it easier for me getting to come to this every day and, and work mm-hmm. on this. And, you know, would it have been the same through any show? Probably not. I lost my grandmother during Footloose and I didn't want to go to rehearsal. Right, right, right. You know, I didn't, I didn't want to be there. I was there out of obligation. But rent, when I was going through what I was going through, it was, I was like, I got to go see my family. This is where right. I want to be. No, no other show can do this other than this one. Yeah. Dustin? <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't think a lot of people know, um, but when we were initially talking about doing the show a second time, Kristen and I were very much on the fence about doing it for for those reasons because there was there was so so much heavy heavy stuff that yeah. we were going through personally at that time that just took a lot took a lot out of you um, just on a level that you you're trying to process it but you're also putting so much into making this what it is supposed to be. Um, so we were very much on the fence about it, but I think we kind of mutually came to the decision together without even actually having to say it, that it was, if we have the opportunity to do it again for those people, we're going to do it. Mm-hmm. Um, so for act one, like I said, I was, I was a lapsed musical theater person who found it again. Um, but there's always going to be a part of me that loves, loves the rock show. Mm-hmm. And everybody knows that, the the first the first song you do in a rock show sets the tone yep. for everything. Yeah. So rent from the time we the band counts in and we just hit everything and hit everything hard. The fact that Mark, I know this guy is going to be going at 110 at yeah. least with yeah. me every time to make sure that that first number sets the tone for the entire night. It has to start off at the highest of mm-hmm. highs for those lows to really hit. Right. So having having the privilege of setting that tone means a lot to me and it's something that i don't take lightly and i look forward to it and then in act two from honestly from i'll cover you reprise on to the end is my favorite part just for just that just monumental shift from that highest of highs down to the lowest of lows so my loss i was going through at that time was literally it, it was current and still happening it was my grandmother i lived with my grandmother all of my life uh didn't meet my real dad my mom was a teenage mom so i lived with my grandparents up until i was in high school so my grandmother was basically like a second mom my mom's incredible by the way it's not it's not that she was not around she was always there as a matter of fact i was blessed to basically have grandparents who were parents and her as well um but um sorry <laughs> you don't talk about it a lot, so I know it's hard. No, my um my grandmother was incredible. She never missed any shows. Even when we did 30 Christmas concerts at the same <laughs> fucking concert over and over again. Rent was the only one that she missed because she was in a hospital bed. I didn't know when I was going to lose her during that run. It could have literally happened at any time. If I wasn't at rehearsal, I was at the hospital. And... I, I turned my phone off during rent performances during dress rehearsal week because I didn't want to get the message while we were there. We got to send her a video of, of a clip of the performance um, right after the first night. She was like barely responsive, but like she 
she could hear it and she would emote with her face. I lost her two days after that. I was out to eat with the rent cast when I got the phone call and everybody raced to the house with me. The entire rent lead cast was there with me that night. And that's, that's why I'll always do this show when I get a chance. It really is a show about found family. Mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing that. <laughs> so Rent is a show that can make your heart sing. It's also a show that can show us the rough parts of humanity and show us at our lowest points. It's a show that will make you feel whether you want to or not. Mm -hmm. Some really big things. Mm -hmm. And when you leave the show, you probably won't be the same person for a while. Anything else that you guys want to throw out there about Rent? Tickets on sale. November <laughs> That's your chance. It's a really fantastic night. I yeah. promise you, no matter how many freaking emails you send me, it's not getting done again. <laughs> so this is, this is, this is it. Us. Yeah, if it does, we're all because we're, 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 we're already. Some of them, some of them, some of them. But no, um, you know, I think you know. Yeah, it's a Tuesday night. Who cares? Yeah. Show starts at seven. You'll be home by nine thirty yeah. in bed. Who cares? Unless you go out with us afterwards. Yeah, come out with yeah, us yeah, afterwards. Have some whiskey. That's what we're about to go do now. Um, <laughs> so, um, but no, I think you know what you're gonna see is. You know, mm -hmm. yeah, we're authentic community theater. You're not seeing community theater talent. Um, you know, I, I feel confident. And I'm biased because it's my show, but <laughs> I feel confident enough that this show could go on tour and hit Broadway and, sure. and people would be fine with what they saw. They, nobody would be mad. You know, so 25 bucks in Hagerstown on Tuesday night at the beautiful Maryland Theater. Mm -hmm. Why not? Yep. What else you have to There's do on literally nothing yeah. to What lose. else do you have to do on a Tuesday like, night? Please. Hit happy hour at Prohibition Hub Perfect. or 28 South yeah. or, and go get a go get a hot dog from Jay at the doghouse and swing over and catch a show at seven o'clock or even starting earlier. I have to I have to be off for work the next morning at five AM. Yep, I'm still I'm still gonna be there. We're doing it. Yep. You know, so, yep, we're doing it. So for those of you that are saying, Oh, it's a Tuesday at the work, shut up and buy your ticket. Let's go. So respectfully. Respectfully. Yeah. No, I'm not being respectful. <laughs> buy your damn ticket. <laughs> I'm just <laughs> and buy it now. That's right. Yeah. And you can buy your ticket through the Maryland Theater or through actforall.org. Uh, I'm John. This is Robbie and the cast of Rent. And thanks for tuning in to the Act Black Box podcast. We'll see you next week. Thanks. Yeah.